Hey everyone, it looks like there are some developments in this refugee case. So, I obviously I'm not in the secrets of the gods. I know nothing. I can just analyze situations and and make assumptions or inferences or something I can deduct from the situation. And when you mix it into the circumstances, it makes sense. So, we I still stand by the video yesterday that I did claiming that this new Saudi refugee uh, was used by the liberals to virtue signal. So that absolutely true. Um, how do I know that they used her to virtue signal? Well, uh, they didn't bring in uh, another true refugee. Like uh, her name is Asia Bibi, who is in Pakistan, and he, she, sorry, she is um, persecuted, and a lot of Pakistanis want to kill her because she accidentally drank from the wrong water fountain. So she drank from the Muslim water fountain and that's not allowed. That's a big nay nay because she is a Christian. So she's, a, she's already been in eight years in jail and she would now be considered a, an actual refugee. But the liberals aren't bringing her. Do you know why they're not bringing her? Or do you know why they're not bringing any other woman refugee? Despite the claims that they gave us yesterday at the press conference, oh, oh even if we can save one woman, it's, it's one more than nothing. That's a, a whole bunch of bullshit. And you know why they picked uh, Rahaf? Is because she had a huge social media presence. She was known internationally. And if you're gonna do your bang of virtue signaling, you're gonna do it on somebody who's already famous. Asia Bibi, only the people who understand Islam and follow Pakistani news uh, or, or who, human rights or something like that would know about her. Not very many people know about her. But a lot of people know about Rahaf because her whole situation went all worldwide in a, in a few days. Um, similar, the white farmers. So the white farmers in South Africa, genuine refugees because they are being persecuted. They are now going through land grabs. So the government has made it legal to seize land without uh, compensation. So that just means they're going to take their lands, kick them off and not uh, give them any money for it. And then these white farmers are going to have to go live in some kind of a, of a ghetto in, in the cities. Um, and they would be real refugees, but we're not bringing them over because you know what? They don't, they're not good, like, they're not good virtual signaling transactions. You know what I mean? Like, the government is using people as a transaction. You know, what What can we gain the most for the least amount of effort and, and virtue signal to the max, you know? So it's like a max campaign, you know, for let's virtue signal to the extent that we can. And, you know, Asia Bibi, mm, not known social media wise. Uh, white farmers, too many of them, uh, too much effort, like don't really want to deal with that shit. So we're going to go and take Rahaf, right? Now there are some rumors that are starting to surface everywhere that she could be uh, potentially a fake refugee. I don't know. I've, I'm, I don't have a crystal ball. But I can tell you this, there, there's been a, a couple things that I've noticed in everything that I saw. And it's really weird. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start by explaining it. Okay. So I'm going to try to put this photo in this video here, but do you remember the picture of her texting? Okay, it, look, it looks like this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reenact it to you. My mic is going to be my text. I'm texting like this, right? And she has like an a earbud in. And my question is, who took that picture? Uh, it, that, that, it doesn't make sense. She claimed to be barricaded in the room in Thailand, and either she had a tripod and an extra camera, and or, or there was somebody in a room now let me remind you that under islam it's not permissible to take pictures of living animals or living uh, human beings so you're not allowed to take pictures it's just it's just it's uh it's considered haram you know it's not permissible you're not allowed to take pictures so what kind of an 18 year old saudi which is like the extreme islam like the wahhabi right what what kind of a six uh sorry 18 year old would walk around with a camera like i on the phone, I get it, right? All the cameras um, in the phones, that's a different thing that's built in. But she was looking at her phone while the camera angle is completely 90 degrees sideways from her. So who took that picture? Or how the hell did she get a camera to take that picture? I mean, that's something that's really, really weird to me. Um, another thing, and this is something that um, a few people have pointed out on my in my comment section from my last video. When she came out at the airport, she was wearing like a baseball cap and a hoodie on top. 
and I'm thinking um, that's almost like a like a hijab, right? It's not, she's not even like if I came from a country where I was oppressed and I was in a free country, I, I'd take my hijab off. But it was almost like a modern oh, version. Of the I thought it was a bit weird that she would wear that. Um, but whatever, so that made me think perhaps she could still be Muslim and behave more like a, or, or be like a Trojan horse for the Muslim Brotherhood. And, and because they were able to get her here so easily, then they would say, okay, well, all you need to do now is claim family abuse to all these other women. So we would see like 600 other women throughout the year come in that way. And, and then they would slowly inundate our population with people that are refugees like that so I thought maybe they're testing it out to see how it's gonna go maybe she's working with them right who knows I, I don't know but to me her behavior seems awfully weird one thing Christian Freeland said is that when Rahaf came out of the airplane she said oh it's so cold here and I'm thinking if you're fleeing true abuse you would say I don't give a shit how cold it is in this country. At least I'm not in Saudi Arabia. That's what I I would think somebody that comes and is rescued from abuse would say. You don't start by complaining. Like you wait 10 years and then start complaining with the rest of us Canadians. But initially that shouldn't be like your your initial... Anyways, that's just my opinion. Um, and then, um, so I don't know. I'm I question everything that's going on around nothing of this seems normal it doesn't seem okay like there's something really weird going on if you guys know what's going on let me know in the comments and and i i, I might make even another follow-up video on this because it seems to be like a like a soap opera almost you know um another thing i want to talk about today is i just saw an article released by the cbc and I don't think the CBC was aware of this whole, that potentially Rahaf could have been conducting a scam. But what I find hilarious is the CBC just put out an article blaming the far right for Rahaf being in the country. So, okay, this is, okay. Apparently, according to the CBC, it's the far right's fault that Rahaf is here and, and has been accepted in Canada as a refugee. And, and I'm not even joking. Like, I don't even know how you can make this stuff up. I think either the CBC just found out she's a fraud, this Rahaf girl, and they're trying to cover their ass and blame somebody else. Or they're seeing the backlash that Canadians are giving on, like, how come Rahaf got to jump the line so quickly, right? Why didn't we just let her go to Australia? Uh, did Canada do the proper background checks? Was Canada made a fool out of? Those are all questions that I've seen all over different uh, media outlets, like the social media, the underground media on YouTube comments, like where you get the real information. And I, th one of those two scenarios is happening. They, they realize the backlash that Canadians are, are, are uh, saying, or they know Rahaf is a fraud, and they publish articles now blaming the far right. Like, where? Who? Who in the far far right? Can, can you please name somebody, CBC, just to say it's the far right's fault that, that Rahaf is here? Um, you know, so essentially the liberals are the ones that granted asylum. It's not like a random group somewhere can just decide that. It has to be the, the federal government. Like, this is a federal government issue, and the federals are, are led by the liberals. So the liberals grant Rahaf asylum, but somehow it becomes the fault of the far right, which is non-existent. There's no organization organized far right in Canada. Um, so you see how corrupt, like how corrupt, how much more of this are we going to take as Canadians? This corruption is insane. I can't, see, I have to calm down yet again. Yeah. See, I just got home from work and at work, my work is very demanding and I had to spend a whole bunch of time today uh, very focused on things. So I, I don't look at my comments and my comments. I don't look at anything like this when I'm at work. It's like eight hours of like full me focusing on, on other stuff, right? And I come home and I have like an hour to catch up on all this stuff. And today has been insane just trying to catch up on all this stuff. Um, so anyways, um, I think now that, you know, when you blend all the stories together, when you see this, the, the government took... Rahaf in because it was an easy, high impact uh, glorification of their government. Uh, everybody in the world could see it. Uh, they're not taking in other refugees like Asia Bibi or any of the white South Africa farmers because that's not as much of a high impact and they don't want to be bothered. Um, so, and now they're saying that it's the far right's fault 
that Rahaf is here. So let me know if you guys know anything, let me know in the comments and I will make another video on this if I need to. I, I'll keep going because this is insane. What the government has done in letting her in so quickly is insane. And then uh, to, for the CBC to go and put, put a, a far right article like, oh, it's the far, far right's fault. That's also insane. Like how I feel like I'm in a, this, this cannot be Canada. This, I, I don't know what's going on guys. So anyways, let me know. I'll see you in the next one and uh, cheers everyone.